My name is Nuha El uh, I'm from, uh, as I mentioned, London South Bank University. On my presentation, will briefly, very briefly, speak about an early stage of my PhD, uh, which is focusing specifically on the literature review, understanding the different uh, philosophies, the interlinkages between the philosophies of building urban resilience, and how is it uh, really having impact on reducing disasters globally. So from that point of view, uh, it's uh, the, the focus or the, the main title of my presentation is looking into the post-2015 framework for disaster risk reduction and understanding spatial planning and uh, socio-ecological construction or actually developing uh, spatial planning and socio-ecological uh, urban resilience toolkit. And this is under the supervision of my professor Charles Egbo. Unfortunately, he's not joining us for the call today, but he is passing his regards. Now, why am I doing this? Because I'm, look, I'm, I'm, I'm linking resilience or building urban resilience into three main terminologies, which is climate change, disaster risk reduction, and displacement. So my targeted group in that research is the displaced communities. So, so I'm looking into the impact of climate change on, on natural disasters and then how does that affect uh, urban, urban resilience in terms of the displaced communities, refugees, and uh, people who are migrating due to the impact of natural disasters. Uh, cost, economic cost, and, and, and uh, I would say uh, impact on critical infrastructure, that's something I've been covered in the previous two presentations uh, very, uh, at a very wider, I would say, and a detailed perspective. But here, what I'm, what I'm bringing up into that presentation specifically is what, what framework that I'm focusing on and why is it that framework. It's the SINDAR framework for disaster risk reduction, which has been launched by the UN uh, Office for Disaster Risk in 2015. In SINDAR, bringing up uh, seven global targets that are to, to be achieved, reducing the, the, the losses in health, uh, economic losses, uh, infrastructures, and trying to develop more resilient frameworks for disaster risk. Now, Sindai have, have come up with, with uh, I would say, fantastic agenda, but unfortunately what it did not cover is looking into uh, the, the one of the, the, the disasters that are considered which uh, drivers of disasters, which is conflict. So from that point of view, unfortunately, if we are looking into Sindai as, as a, a framework to reduce disasters and build resilience, it does not cover uh, uh, losses on data for displaced population. So automatically, we do have a gap when it comes into global reporting. From, from, for that reason, starting looking into who are the displaced population, how are they uh, assessed globally, in terms of movement, urban mobility, and how, how, what, what are actually the, the regions that are mostly affected. By looking into that, I, I get to understand that there is around 33.3 million people who were internally displaced by conflict in 2013 in just five countries. Those five countries, interestingly, are within the Arab region. So. Uh, that will be my geographical outside scoop of, of, of that research. And by looking into that, why is it important to, to, to understand this in the context of the Arab region? Because in just these five countries, we have, if, if it's 62% of the total displaced population globally, that, that comes into understanding what are the drivers of the risk so it's not the natural disasters only, but issues of, of uh, economic uh, uh, inequality. We have issues of uh, infra uh, lack of, of, of developing infrastructure at a wider scale. We are looking of issues of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, also the, the, the lack of urban governance. We are looking into problems of uh, political instability. So there are a lot of, of drivers for, for disasters. So it's not only the natural perspective, but in order to build resilience, we have to look into the, the drivers of the disasters themselves. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to understand what is hazard. So in terms of terminology at the moment, as, as I mentioned, I'm looking into the literature review at that level. I'm still moving into the data collection 
by June 2017 at more of, of a, a detailed level of, of setting up uh, structured interviews, surveys, and developing uh, a more, I would say, detailed analysis of my research. But then uh, looking by understanding what hazards are, what are the different terminologies in that specific context driven by climate change and ending up with displacement, I'm also understanding exposure in order to reduce the vulnerability. By, by, by looking into these three uh, elements, I will, I will go back into Sindai, look into exactly what Sindai priorities are. As I mentioned earlier, there are seven global targets that Sindai, Sindai brought, but its priority comes in, number one, understanding disaster risk, number two, strengthening disaster risk governance, number three, enhancing the preparedness for effective recovery, or what we call building back better, and investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience. So by, by understanding each and every one of those priority, I will, I will be looking into that cycle of how disaster is, uh, disasters can be managed and the risk of the disasters can be reduced by the cycle that you see on the outer level, which is planning, financing, execution, and then operation, follow-up, control, and policies. Now, that cycle is very, very well connected to the Sindai indicators, which each and every, every one of the global targets does have indicators to measure disasters. So what I'm doing is not bringing up a new toolkit, but understanding what are the existing toolkits, how these indicators are, are applied, uh, how is the data collected by, by, the, by the governments within that MENA region, and then understanding the gaps of, of why are the disaster losses increasing when we do have such uh, excellent indicators, and that will happen by, by interlinkages with the Sustainable Development Goals and the Habitat 3 New Urban Agenda. How or what would be the, the, uh, the outcomes, or the, and mainly I would say these are my objectives for specifically this part of my research. My research is covering a wider scope, but for that, that at that level, this is what I'm looking at, which is to review, document the role of the key stakeholder in the cause of disaster risk reduction, identify, understand, and use current and future dynamic risk assessment for evidence, explore the nature and impact of the utilization of GIS technology to achieve urban resilience, and then develop spatial planning, socio-ecological construction toolkit. So in brief, this is what I'm working on at the moment, and I'll leave that for your question, please. This sounds interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments? So far, they, they, um, how did you get that? Uh, the Sendai framework, that's from previous research, right? That's not your work. And instead, you start from Sendai framework and start to look for some indicators. Is that correct? Uh, no, Sendai framework is, is uh, a UN agreement that has been okay. signed by around 185 countries globally. Mm -hmm. It's a non-binding agreement, which is interesting that, that it makes it very challenging to be applied or, sorry, uh, taking into force by local governments. So what I'm looking at is looking into, because when Sindai was launched in 2015, we had also the Sustainable Development Goals at the same year, and we had the Climate Change Agreement. We had a lot of global uh, framework that have been signed, so a lot of international commitment that came into place in that year. So what, 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 what attracts my attention is if, if really those frameworks are to work and, and to achieve the global targets, then we need to understand what has been going on before, which is what we call the Hugo framework, and that's where, where, where the, the terminology of building resilience has started in terms of the UN framework. I'm not speaking in, in, in specifically in research, but I'm looking into UN agencies. So Hugo Framework brought in what we call the Making Cities Resilience Campaign, which is, uh, have been launched in 2010, encouraging local governments to uh, measure resilience by using indicators of what we call the 10 essentials. So if that was working perfectly, why are we having losses increasing in human and financial assets? That means that there is a gap. 
So that gap is what I'm trying to investigate now. See if the SINDI indicators that are coming in and the SDGs and the Habitat 3 agenda are able or capable to cover the gaps that we had previously. If not, then what is what are the reasons? And that's why I brought in the drivers of risks at, at the beginning of my presentation. Okay. All right. Any comments or questions? I do have a uh, remark, Pinchao, back and here. Uh, I think it's very important for your commission when developing whatever framework that you link in with those uh, global UN agreements. Yep. Uh, use the same terminology or at least make the link. Uh, this presentation shows the importance of that. Uh, to develop something completely different which is not linked to those agreements will make it very, very difficult to communicate with the international community. Yes. And that, that, that goes to um, the, their collection because different kind of areas, they have different uh, you know, data topologies and data sources and yep. you know, that can be very difficult. So the question goes to uh, um, Nuha again and do you have any plan to collect data from different countries other than UK? Yes, yes. Well, what, what is meant for that, for that presentation is, is to focus on more of how, how, how the, the data segregation for the indicators from these three frameworks that I've mentioned are understood by the local governments. So my, my focus is, in terms of the, 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 the stakeholders who will take those frameworks, how do they actually get to understand the terminologies from the different perspectives, just as we've seen with infrastructure, it, it, it has completely different understanding from one region to the other, from one, even one country to the other. So this is what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm focusing on now, but then it brings me in to the MENA region, which is why I'm focusing on the space population, because they are not listed as one of the, I would say, community groups or, or the, 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 in terms of the list of data losses when it comes into the indicators. So maybe you're going to other in, in European countries to collect the data, or are you coming to, no, you know, maybe... No, it's no. going to focus on the MENA region, and it's going to, to focus on one country. At the moment, I'm discussing with my supervisor that we are looking into, because in terms of, uh, as I mentioned, hazards, uh, okay. I'm looking into general hazards, but I'm, I'm, I'm focusing at the moment on more climate-induced hazards, so we're looking whether into understanding, in terms of the region, floods and droughts are the, 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 I would say, the most challenging hazards. So by, by looking into floods and droughts, we have uh, droughts in the northern part of the region, so within the area of Syria, uh, Jordan, how does that have affected the conflict in Syria and driven migration and, sorry, driven displacement there? And then also looking into the impact of flooding in the southern part of the region, which is picking uh, Sudan, and looking into the issues of flooding, how did that cause conflict in southern Sudan, and then how did it impact the, the displacement of the population there as well. Okay. So it's pretty much uh, disaster-oriented rather than just kind of developing some. So I, I guess uh, so developing some metrics out of the different kinds of uh, impact. Maybe that's the natural mm -hmm. disasters, as far as I understand. It's kind of a very mm -hmm. acute impact to the entire so social ecological system. Flooding, yeah. earthquake. But uh, mm -hmm. I think you, you and Hemi probably have a dialogue, I mean, afterwards, because she, he's doing some kind of uh, mat matrices, but it's kind of getting more chron chronological. It's mm -hmm. not about disaster, right? Mm -hmm. So that can be a very interesting complementary research, and uh, yeah, absolutely, so, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So any comments? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a question about the. Uh, uh, this is Pimbo uh, from Arizona. My question is uh, for the data collection. Uh, recently, uh, we are working on using satellite imagery, social media for analyzing uh, urban agriculture. Uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, Maybe for this type of uh, uh, like a disaster management and uh, re type of research, uh, are you collecting data uh, based on surveys, um, 
is there any possibility to explore the social media data or, or satellite imagery or, or like UAV data? Yes, because uh, one of one of the, the, the objectives that I've brought in, which is have mentioned uh, GIS mapping, uh, because if, if my targeted uh, population are the displaced population, uh, in terms of their accessibility into technology, it's more focused on mobile phones, and uh, th that can be easily traced by looking into, into GIS mapping to understand what are the hazards that they are exposed to and how can we trace their losses and then link that back into uh, the indicators on data losses. So, yes. So, so right now, uh, the team is working. Uh, and Noha, you are, you are working together with a geospatial scientist now? No, not at the moment, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, possibly because uh, we're, 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 we're we are we are working on the uh, yeah. yeah we are working on urban urban farming. What I mean by urban farming is that uh, Phoenix is a desert area in Arizona in US, yes. and uh, uh, because this area it's pretty much there is no cloud. You know, uh, the, the city itself it's uh, three hundred more than three hundred days. It's uh, there is no no cloud. Then uh, we pretty much rely on the satellite imagery to analyze. Uh, the canal system, water system, and then urban farming. And uh, yeah. I I guess it's uh, interesting to explore the use of a satellite imagery. And uh, uh, we, we recently started to use a natural language processing to analyze the uh, social media data uh, to see how how all kinds of events happen and related to what's really happening in the urban, urban agriculture. This is very interesting, and definitely yeah. we would welcome collaborations uh, on at that level for sure. Sure. Okay. So, do you have any questions? Yeah, just wanted to ask you one thing, Noha. Uh, you mentioned this is this place population the measure your measure for resilience, or is the object of your study? Because I, I I didn't get that quite right. It's my focus group. Your focus group, and what kind of uh, Relocation or shelter capacity? Are they in temporary housing and in, in uh, relocated to temporary. urban? Temporary. Yes, it is temporary housing, and that's why they are not, uh, uh, I would say, outlined as one of the categories in terms of uh, assessing data losses, and that's what uh -huh. brings in the gaps. If we are to build resilience in such a region with a lot of conflict and uh, political instability, and not considering displaced population, then this will be an issue because displacement now, for example, with the Syrian conflict is lasting for years. So it's mm -hmm. not an issue, it's not a temporary matter anymore. Yeah, I see. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Um, thank you very much for Nuha's presentation.